I'm writing about the rise of global migration, um, and I'm telling the story through an extended family of uh, Filipino workers who have traveled all over the globe um, in pursuit of jobs. As a young journalist uh, 25 years ago, I had a fellowship to live in the Philippines, and I moved into a poor neighborhood in Manila and lived with a family. Um, there were five kids in the family. The father was away in Saudi Arabia uh, working on a labor contract for two years. He would go away, come back home every two years, visit for a few months, and go back. There were five kids in the family, and all five kids grew up to become overseas workers like their father. So um, what they thought was a temporary solution or an emergency solution to their poverty became uh, a way of life for this family and for literally millions of Filipinos who are perhaps uh, the most globalized labor force in the world. I'm trying to use the journey of this one family um, to help explore uh, the rise of migration across the world. A lot's changed since the father in this family first went overseas. Uh, one is it's not just the fathers that go anymore. Um, there's been a feminization of migration uh, increasingly throughout the extended family, which includes 40-something uh, cousins. It's the women who go. Many of them have kids that are left behind uh, in the care of grandparents or siblings or makeshift arrangements. So one of the issues that comes uh, up in the Philippine context and increasingly across the world uh, is the separation of, uh, of mothers and children and uh, what that ends up doing uh, to the relationship to the kids' well-being, you know, what happens to the kids left behind. Uh, another thing that's really different from the time the father went is um, the technology. Uh, when he went <clears throat> to Saudi Arabia initially in the early 1980s, he would record uh, cassette tapes and send them home. Uh, it would take a month to, for the tape to get back. Everybody would gather around, listen. Um, they'd record a tape, send it back. So it could take two months to get an answer uh, to a question. Uh, phone calls were prohibitively expensive. Now the entire clan is linked by um, Facebook and uh, things. You know, the news travels uh, instantly across the globe. So. Uh, they're they're hyperlinked. Um, that I think alters the experience uh, uh, for the migrant of being abroad, um, but it also promotes migration because uh, one of the things you need for a migration uh, to start a migration network to be sustained is information, and uh, people. The, the effect of this technology is to. Um, uh, let everybody know as soon as there's a job uh, opportunity. It uh, plants the idea of becoming a migrant. Um, so it both. Uh, uh, encourages and transforms the experience of migration. We're in the midst of one of the greatest migrations in the history of the United States. There's 40 million um, uh, uh, immigrants in the U.S. One out of four uh, children in the U.S. is either an immigrant or the child of, immigra of an immigrant. Um, immigrants are coming from very different places than they've come from in the past. They're coming from across the developing world. Uh, they're going to many different places than they've gone to in the past. Uh, it's not just the traditional gateways like uh, New York and San Francisco, but they're spread out to small towns and to um, uh, places that aren't used to having them. So immigration is transforming the United States. But we tend to think of it as a quintessentially American issue, um, a, a product of our unique history, a product of our uh, unique border with a, with a poor country 2,000 miles long. Um, what uh, was a kind of a journey of discovery for me is in going overseas was to see uh, just how ubiquitous migration had become. Um, people were migrating from poor countries but also migrating to poor countries. They were migrating uh, uh, to non-traditional countries. You know, migration isn't just changing the United States, it's changing the world. And uh, I think you can't really understand both the challenges and the opportunities that migration presents to the United States unless you can step back and see it. Um, in its global context. It's, uh, it's the third great wave of globalization. We had the, the, uh, the movement of goods, trade across borders. We had the movement of money, international finance across uh, borders. And we have the, uh, the movement of people across borders. I think uh, uh, it's a help to see it in that broader context.